on your boards, they're going to show you pictures of like certain structures in the heart, and your job is to identify them. It'll either be an image with just one view, or it could be two views in one image, or it can be a video. Your job is to discern what type of pathology is in the images or video. We're going to talk about the difference between benign and malignant tumors. Benign tumors will have a more hyperechoic, homogeneous look to the mass, whereas malignant tumors, although are hyperechoic, have a more heterogeneous look to the mass. The most common malignant tumor in adults is a sarcoma, and the most common malignant tumor in children is a rhabdomyosarcoma. And then the most common sarcoma is an angiosarcoma. And a leiomyosarcoma is considered to be an IVC tumor. These can grow along the IVC. A renal cell carcinoma is also called an IVC tumor. A Wilms tumor, which is also called a nephroblastoma, is the most common IVC tumor. It's also worth noting that malignancy usually metastasize from either the lungs or the breasts. Oh, I have it written twice here, here and here. And how you differentiate a benign from a malignant tumor is a lot of times a malignant tumor will have an associated pericardial effusion. That's the most common complication from a malignant tumor. When you have a fast buildup of pericardial effusion, you have the risk of developing tamponade as well as these cardiac arrhythmias. Another concern with any type of tumor found in the heart is the chance of embolization. Embolization means when something is in the heart or somewhere in the body and then it gets detached and goes somewhere else. If you found a tumor in someone's heart, there's a slight chance that pieces of that tumor could break loose and then go to the brain or to you know any of the four extremities. If a tumor gets big enough, it can cause obstructions. Some tumors can get so big that they can overtake a chamber. I just want to emphasize that it's very important that you memorize this stuff. Like the other name for a Wilms tumor is a nephroblastoma. Mm -hmm. I want you to think every time you hear nephroblastoma, think Wilms mm -hmm. tumor. Because there's another tumor out there that's pretty close in wording and sound. It's called a neuroblastoma. A neuroblastoma is something completely different than a nephroblastoma. Angiosarcoma. This is the most common type of sarcoma. And they're typically found in the right atrium slash the right AV groove. You can see that this tumor is completely taking over the right atrium. You can see it here in the short axis view at the aortic valve level. You can also see it in the subcostal view. Here's another example. If you look at the texture of it, it's got like this heterogenic type look to it. So these tumors are usually large near the inferior vena cava, but not in the inferior vena cava. This angiosarcoma has infiltrated the posterior wall. Usually they're found on the right side, but it's not totally uncommon for them to be on the left side. This is a typical sarcoma. Look how big this tumor is. This is the problem with any type of tumor, is the possibility of obstructing a chamber or whatever. This sarcoma is completely filled in and obstructed the right ventricle. Sarcoma tumors are the most common malignant tumors in adults. The next one is a rhabdomyosarcoma. And look, what do you see in this image here? What's something that jumps out at you? When you're taking your boards and you see a mass, look at the entire image. If you see a pericardial effusion, chances are it's probably going to be malignant. Like I said, rhabdomyosarcomas are the most common malignant tumor in children. They can grow in any chamber. They have no limits. They can grow anywhere. Patients who have this type of tumor uh, don't have a good prognosis, meaning chances of living are very poor. They have a high mortality. Here's another example. So it's completely taken up the right side. Lyomyosarcoma, they can originate from the vascular system and grow along the IVC. If you're asked on your test, which tumor is typically found growing along the IVC, look for this, the lyomyosarcoma. This mass was confirmed to be a lyomyosarcoma just by biopsy. A biopsy is the only way you can accurately diagnose a tumor. But are you starting to see a trend here? 
up to this point, where have all the malignant tumors been located in the heart? It's probably safe to say that a lot of malignant tumors are found on the right side. Lymphomas typically are on the right side. It looks like this one is right in between the right atrium and the right ventricle. What else do you see in this image besides the tumor? Pericardial fusion. Okay, renal cell carcinoma. Renal cell carcinoma tumors are IVC tumors. You'll see it coming in through the IVC and then in to the right atrium. This is the same patient here. And this tumor was invading the right atrium from the IVC. You can see that this tumor is coming in from the IVC into the right atrium and invading or taking over the right ventricle. What's the most mm -hmm. common IVC tumor? The most common IVC tumor is a Wilms tumor or a nephroblastoma. Benign tumors are a lot more common than malignant tumors. The most common benign tumor is the myxoma. The myxoma tumor accounts for probably about 75% of all the primary benign tumors. Myxoma tumors are more often found in the left atrium and rarely found in the ventricles. They can be found there, but most of the time they're found in the left atrium and they can be found in the right atrium. What you want to look for is a connection of the tumor to the fossa ovalis. On your boards, you'll have still pictures with like an arrow pointing to some weird structure in the atria, mm -hmm. probably the left atrium. You're gonna wanna look for a, a globular smooth surface. It's usually round or oval and it's going to connect the left atrial septum or the fossa ovalis. And what happens is if they get large enough, they can impede diastolic filling and cause mitral valve stenosis. Here's a good example of a myxoma. Here's systole and here's diastole, right? And mm -hmm. you can see that in diastole, this tumor is protruding or invading the left ventricle. Mm -hmm. Now, if you just have a still image like this, and it says what structure is in the left atrium, you can see here that this tumor is attached to the fossa ovalis. It's pretty easy to identify. You can see how globular and homogeneous it is, as well as really smooth. It's got like that smooth texture. This is the benign tumor. Can you see why this will impede diastolic filling? Because if you look at it in diastole here, you can imagine that blood flow is not flowing into the left ventricle very passively. Essentially, this causes stenosis. This tumor is taking up the majority of the left atrium. When the mitral valve opens during diastole, this tumor is going to invade the left ventricle temporarily. And look at the space around here. Just in this image here, there's not very much space for blood to kind of flow around, making it hard for blood flow to flow passively into the left ventricle. This is gonna cause stenosis. Don't confuse a myxoma with a thrombus. Before you get trigger happy and decide to choose a thrombus, make sure that you look at what the question is asking and look at the ventricle, look at your picture. Because a thrombus really won't grow in an area where blood is moving quickly. If it's in the left atrium, there's two things that will cause a thrombus. Okay, here's a really good example of a thrombus in the left atrium. Look at this mitral valve. Does that look normal? No. No. In fact, this is rheumatic. Rheumatic disease of the mitral valve can cause mitral stenosis. If it gets severe enough, then blood flow isn't going to move very quickly through this left atrium, causing a thrombus. How are you going to distinguish a thrombus from a myxoma is rheumatic disease. Think thrombus 
if the image looks like there's rheumatic disease of the mitral valve. I also want you to think left atrial thrombus if the patient is in atrial fibrillation. If they show an image and you are unclear if it's a thrombus or a myxoma and there's no rheumatic mitral stenosis, then look at the EKG. Hopefully the EKG will show that irregularly irregular rhythm. If that's the case, then it's going to be a left atrial thrombus. But a thrombus won't get this big in someone with atrial fibrillation. This is the apical two-chamber, right? Yes. If they showed an image like this, okay, and there's like an arrow pointing to this area, which is the left atrial appendage, and you see like a structure there that's filled mm -hmm. in, think thrombus before you think anything else. If they ever point a, an arrow to the left atrial appendage, always think thrombus. Like in this image here, if they show this image with arrows pointing to this random structure, you're also going to think thrombus. Because even though this is the left atrium, is this mm -hmm. the interatrial septum right there? The answer would be no. This is the mid-esophageal three-chamber view. Don't let this trick you. It looks like that this could be the intraatrial septum, but it's not. It's just a part of the left atrial wall. Before you decide that it's a myxoma, make sure that whatever it's attached to is actually the fossa ovalis. If it is, then think myxoma. If it's not, think thrombus. Mm -hmm. Cool on that. This is definitely a thrombus because this patient has rheumatic disease, rheumatic mitral stenosis. Mm -hmm. And then this is definitely a thrombus because it's in the left atrial appendage. Period. The end. Myxomas are tricky because if you found a tumor in a heart, what would be the first thing that you would think of to treat if it's a benign tumor? You would want to surgically remove it, right? If you saw this in your left atrium, you would definitely want to remove it, right? Yes. And usually they would. But the problem is, if you remove a myxoma, the chances of it growing back are really good. And if it does grow back, then it's going to grow back more rapidly. That's the problem with these. Mm -hmm. You're not going to remove this and then treat this patient with radiation therapy or chemotherapy. If this was malignant, you would remove it and then treat them with radiation or chemotherapy to destroy the cells that are still lingering around. It's impossible to get rid of every single myxoma cell because you can't even see a cell. There could be just one cell left over and it'll still grow back. Here's some good examples of a myxoma. You see that this is the four chamber view. It's kind of like the RV focused view. And you have the arrow pointing to the structure there. How easy would it be to think that that's a thrombus? Pretty easy, right? It's yeah. not in the left atrium, it's in the right atrium. So why not mm -hmm. think that it could be a thrombus? Well, these are the ways that you can tell if there's a thrombus in the right atrium. And the first is a pacemaker wire. If you see a pacemaker wire and you see the structure, possibly a thrombus. If you see a catheter coming into the right atrium via the SVC or the IVC and you see the structure, <laughs> maybe a thrombus. If there's a pacemaker wire or if there's a catheter and you see a structure like that, I would think a thrombus first before myxoma, especially because it's in the right atrium. But if it's just this image and there's no catheter or pacemaker wire and you see this, it's probably a myxoma because look where it's connected to, the intraatrial septum. Okay, now, here's what an M-mode would look like. 
if they showed you a typical M mode in the presence of a mic soma, you're going to have the same look or similar look mm -hmm. to mitral stenosis, where you have the flattening of the EF slope. You can see in this M mode, this would be the E wave, and the F wave would be kind of like down here. Then you have the A wave and the C wave. Here's the D wave. Maybe it's closer over here. But DFAC is what I think. And if you have a flattening of your EF slope, there's some sort of mitral stenosis going on. But this image shows a myxoma. This kind of shows you why a myxoma would cause mitral stenosis. Here's the myxoma in this M mode. Here and here and here and here. We mentioned myxomas are the most common benign tumors in adults, about 75%. Another thing you might have to know is that rhabdomyomas are the most common benign tumors in children and infants. And these tumors will typically or sometimes regress as the patient ages. A fibroma is the second most common in children. Third most common is a papillary fibroelastoma. Now, they're more commonly found on the mitral valve, but you can see them on the aortic valve and other valves, but most of the time they're on the mitral valve. But on your boards, they probably won't have this word here. They probably won't have papillary fibroelastoma. I bet they'll just have fibroelastoma to throw you off. If you just see fibroelastoma, make sure you still think papillary fibroelastoma. I would almost bet they won't have the word papillary along with fibroelastoma. We'll just have fibroelastoma. And here's an example of a papillary fibroelastoma. Now, these types of tumors can mimic a thrombus, a vegetation, but if you see this, let's say they showed an image just like this that's not labeled, with the papillary fibroelastoma there and an arrow pointing to it, they said, what is the structure? Here's how you're gonna know that it's not a vegetation. A vegetation mm -hmm. would most likely be on this side if the valve was closed. You see the aortic valve is closed. Fibroelastomas are more closely related to Lambo's excrescence, which is a non-bacterial endocarditis. A complication with these is they can embolize and go to the brain or, you know, embolize to an extremity. A fibroelastoma is more commonly found on valves, more commonly on the mitral valve, and is the third most common adult benign tumor. It's usually found downstream of the aortic valve. They're usually small, pedunculated, and round in appearance, like that. The next type of benign tumor, lipotomous hypertrophy. These types of tumors are usually found in the interatrial septum. Here's the septum, right? This whole thing's a septum, but look how thick this portion is and this portion. Here's the right atrium. So what you need to know is that these types of tumors will invade the interatrial septum. And they have this dumbbell or hourglass shape. These are really similar. This right here is a lipoma, and look what structure is invaded. This is the interatrial septum. Mm -hmm. See how thick that is? This is the right atrium, yeah. right ventricle, left ventricle, and left atrium. And there's a lipoma.